Hey everybody, in this video today we're going to discuss a bit about the latest updates in Next.js over the past year and maybe get into a bit about the future and where that's going and how that affects your projects and us here at Prismic. For that we've got our in-house Next.js guy, we've got Alex Trost in the studio with us. So he's going to illuminate a few things for us and so we're going to get into that now and Alex, can you tell me right away, off the bat, what for you is the most interesting things that's happened for, with Next.js over the past year or so? Yeah, so uh, Next.js 12 came out, I think, back, back in October of 2021, okay. and that was kind of a big thing. It was the biggest update ever that they had, I think. It was, it was, it was the biggest release that they had so far. Okay, what and, makes it so big? I mean, size. No. Um, so <laughs> basically, um, they they brought a few features out. One of them was a Rust-based compiler uh, okay. called SWC. And basically, that takes the place of Babel. And long story short, that just kind of makes your uh, build times a lot faster. So it's something that like you don't have to really do much to set up or anything. Like It's mm -hmm. just part of uh, Next.js 12. And you just enjoy the developer experience that comes with that. It's just much faster. Because um, I mean, for me, I I really can't stand when it takes a while for my page to reload. So I change a little bit of code and I have to wait like 30 seconds for to, just to see if that's good or not. Mm -hmm. um, and then page builds, like those kinds of things are so important. So with Next.js 12, bringing in faster builds and, and refreshes, that was pretty huge. Okay, so it's affecting both development yeah, exactly. and production. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. I wouldn't know too deep of how, how all that stuff works, so you're really educating me here. No. Um, okay, that's cool. So people are able to, to start doing their updates, get through the stuff much faster because of that. Yeah, so that's that's just one of the features that, that came uh, with Next 12. Another one is middleware, and that's good for a whole bunch of stuff. Can you can you uh, go into a bit more detail for people like myself who aren't 100% sure what middleware is? Yeah, so I mean, middleware at its... Uh, most basic just kind of lets you run any kind of code uh, before the request finishes. Mm -hmm. So it's good for things like A-B testing, authorization, uh, redirects, internationalization. Like so if you want to do something special for uh, different locales, you can do that. And um, normally in, 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 next, in next 11, you would have had to maybe do it client side or do something else that's kind of hacky. But with middleware, you can intercept that request before it finishes. and. Uh, run a little bit of code, so it's just it's just a, a helpful thing that not everyone might use, but mm -hmm. it's definitely a big feature that uh, brings Next more up to par with m like PHP kind of frameworks and just other other frameworks that people might lean into if they need something else. I mean, even like Rails might uh, like absolutely has these kinds of features, and so Next getting uh, features that these other frameworks has just definitely puts it in a better spot when people are building big uh, enterprise apps and they need all these different uh, things. Okay, so it's given the developers more power to, to build their own tools that they need to, to work with these larger apps, essentially. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. And uh, what else have we had going on uh, with that update for Next 12 then? Yeah, so one of my favorites uh, that came a, a little bit later, I think like 12.1 uh, or 12.2, is uh, on demand incremental static regeneration, which is the catchiest name for yeah, sure. Um, but you can call it on, on demand ISR okay. for short. So what is on demand ISR for the kids at home? Watching? Yeah. So in, uh, incremental static regeneration uh, basically allows you to specify a specific page to be rebuilt or pages to be rebuilt. So Next has um, a few different ways of fetching data okay. that, that you, you, you might you might be familiar with that it's it's had for a while now um, one is get server-side props so yeah. that's when you want to server server-side rendering and thank stuff you like that. yeah <laughs> you, you want to render your uh, your page on the server side okay um, you can also do get static props which mm -hmm. allows you to statically build your site out okay. um, but if you want something in between or if you want to just rebuild a certain page like for instance say uh, a prismic editor mm -hmm. is just changing the title on one blog post do you want to go through and rebuild your whole site not really right yeah. um, and so with on-demand incremental static regeneration or on-demand isr uh, you're able to using like a, a web hook you basically send it a string or in, in a, an array of strings mm -hmm. and say these changed and then next 
takes that path and says, okay, well, that corresponds to this page and this page and this page. And it goes and rebuilds just those pages so that you don't have to go and rebuild your entire site and take a lot of time and a lot of your resources if you're obviously paying for your uh, Vercel or your Netlify bills. Okay, that's sick. Well, so that means like if you're able to tell your Next.js app what has changed, it's only changing a small part, faster rebuild, yep. shorter shorter build times, saving money. Yeah, and, and if you think about like, um, this has always been kind of one of the arguments against the Jamstack or against like static uh, sites is with something like, like, you know, the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times mm -hmm. or I'm not sure what Paris has, but uh, but the basically, figure. yeah, but basically <laughs> big newspapers or, just, or even just sites with thousands of blog posts, having to rebuild every single one of those blog posts when they haven't changed doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So um, practices like on-demand ISR just makes a whole lot of sense. And it uh, gives your, n not just your, like, you know, not the people who have to pay the bills of Netlify and, and Vercel when you have all those rebuilds, but even editors get to see that change happen faster yeah. because it's just a couple of pages rebuilding. And that's huge for companies like you're talking about, news websites, blogs, and stuff like that, because when you've got a massive website like that and you have to run the full build every time, you're losing, it's not a lot of seconds, like it's a few minutes to maybe build a whole website, but if you're in the world of publishing and a new story breaks, you need to get that story out there and then for in terms of, you know, SEO, whatever Google pulls up first and that's the story that's being thrown up. If people have the, the link, then they can get it on the Twitter and get that information out there and then. Being the first to publish that story is important. And so something like this is huge for companies like that if they want to get their information out the fastest. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, it's, it's another key feature that I think really puts Next in uh, category all its own mm -hmm. and uh, the next thing uh, <laughs> the next thing mm -hmm. is uh, react 18 support um, and react 18 is kind of a conversation all to its own okay. um, but what it does is it also allows for what's coming in next 13 but as people are watching this it might have already hit and they might be already using it but there's some really exciting features in next 13 that we, we already uh, can get a little preview of and can already see kind of coming over the mountain. And uh, I'm pretty excited about them. Okay, yeah, they've got some big announcements coming for that soon or some sort of like uh, big release party <laughs> or something like that coming. Perhaps, I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> they, they they keep it wrapped up, but uh, we, we think that next 13 is gonna be pretty huge. Um, and a big part of that is because of the routes and layouts RFC that they put out a few months back. Okay. And that's been uh, very interesting. So if, if you're familiar at all with the way that Remix does their routing or just their, um, yeah, I, I guess their routing and layouts, uh, it's it's kind of a similar concept to that. Okay, so there's big changes coming in terms of some of the, the basic kind of standards in Next.js and the Next Wild and the sounds of it. Yeah, so Next 13 should bring with it um, the beta version for the new routes and layouts mm -hmm. feature or whatever, whatever you want to call it, but basically this new way of handling uh, how we do routing in Next.js. Okay. You might be familiar right now that uh, Next.js is kind of famous for its uh, file-based routing. Yeah, the where pages directory and you start to build out from there. Yeah, exactly. So you, you've, you've got your pages directory and in index.js in that will basically give you your homepage. If you have an about.js there, that gives you your slash about yeah. um, and you can do routing based on uh, yeah just just files and it's kind of simple. You see what you're, what, what, uh, what you're building out. But with this new way of doing it, you have what's called an app folder. Um, and that allows you to kind of specify certain files as layouts. And that is really interesting because it, it, it gives us some new features. And you might be wondering. Right, like didn't we already have layouts, no? Yes, well, kind of. So you can use layouts as just kind of a good practice in Next.js. Like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to uh, keep pasting a header component and a footer component in yeah. every single one of your pages, right? That's kind of a pain. Yeah. Um, so we kind of developed this practice uh, where you create a layout component 
and then you might you will import that into all of your pages we still have to do that to all of your pages yeah, so and then you wrap all of your pages in that layout component yeah so that's kind of become a practice but here it's going to be like an actual feature of next.js where a layout is this special kind of file okay um and with it like w one thing that a layout can do is it can actually fetch its own data. Mm -hmm. So gone are the days of needing to fetch your data from your page component okay. and then pass it into your layout component. So uh, for instance, when you're building a Prismic site, it's pretty common that you want your navigation or, or and, and your footer to be editable by your content team. Mm -hmm. So you want to uh, fetch that data from Prismic when you build that page, but then you have to pass it down to your layout component, and maybe your layout component has a header component, so that layout component needs to pass it down to the header component, and so... Yeah, that means doing two queries on the same page. Uh, on a, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, on, on every page, you, you have to add that query in addition to the layout component to pass it that data, mm -hmm. and it's just a pain to do it through your entire website, right? Okay, yeah. And so here, the layout component can fetch its own data, and it does a bunch of other stuff that we can kind of like touch on a little bit. Okay. Um, but the page can also fetch its own data. So the, the layout component can just handle that navigation and footer request. And then the page, say it's a blog post, yeah. can just query for the blog post. Okay. It doesn't need to also query for other stuff. Okay, so it sounds like there's some uh, big changes in the way that people are starting to will be go forward with building with Next.js in the next while. You know, if they're moving to a new style away from the old classic pages, directory, rooting, all of that. Is that something that uh, you're going to be, you'll have to do right away? when you're using this new version of Next.js? No, so actually um, they said that it's going to be coming out as a beta for the beginning of uh, Next 13. Okay. Not sure about beyond that, but uh, at least for the time being. Uh, Next and Vercel have been really, really good about uh, avoiding breaking changes whenever possible. So okay. I would be really surprised if all of a sudden you need to switch your sites over and that if you upgrade to Next 13 or even 14 that it's going to break a a, uh, a site that's building in the pages way. Um, but yeah, this is, is going to be, uh, as, as they've said, basically the biggest change since they first released it back in 2016. Wow. Um, and it's one of those things where like, yeah, the company says this is their biggest thing. I, I agree with them because uh, it's not not always the case. Like this doesn't feel just like hype. There are mm -hmm. so many good features that come with this mm -hmm. um, that we've been looking forward to for a while. Uh, not just with like this routing RFC, but just with uh, using React server components and the power that's been coming uh, or, or that will come with that. Uh, we've been hearing about that for years, and it feels like one of those things that just like at every uh, React conference, it's like it's coming, it's coming. Well, like we're we're seeing the power here and. Um, what it's going to bring, I see a lot of people really once they get a ha once they get the hang of it, really enjoying um, what this RFC is promising. Granted, uh, no one's had their hands on it yet, but just seeing what it's uh, what it's capable of, the things I mean, just data fetching across several uh, across a layout and a page and another layout, like like it's just the the things we'll be able to do here the the way we're going to architect our sites and our apps is uh it's going to make it really nice to be a next developer in 2022 and 2023 well thank you alex that was really illuminating i've learned a lot there awesome hopefully you can give me a help to try some of this stuff out in the future love to uh, and if anyone at uh, home watching this wants to get some more information about next.js about next 13 coming up you can reach out to alex on twitter and if you want to try out uh, next.js you can check out our docs we've got some starter projects and stuff there and make sure you subscribe to the channel here for more interesting videos uh we have a lot of conversations about next.js as well and also if you want to check out alex's video around here he's going to show you how to get set up with uh, next.js and slice machine so you can start building your projects right away with components so uh, thanks for watching and see you later.